Right, so it's been over, just over two years since, you know, my five month body weight transformation uh, as I'm recording this right now. And obviously that video has about like 900,000 views. It's actually pretty crazy thinking like how many eyeballs have actually like seen my face. Pretty crazy, right? Uh, but with that said, obviously like as you can tell like in the comment section and that, like some people just haven't really got the gist of like some of the things in the transformation. And obviously understandably, there have been some things in the transformation video that's covered, which I don't don't really address in full detail if that makes sense so in this video I'm going to show you and I'm going to go through three truths with my calisthenics transformation that I um, achieved at home to really help you also like establish realistic expectations for yourself so you can you know create the best transformation for yourself as well so the first truth is obviously simply that some of my progress was actually tied to muscle memory right I do actually mention pretty much at the start of the video that um, I did actually lift weights you know, mainly in gym, a cut for a couple of years before starting cast next. I did also do some body weight stuff, you know, in that, like in those first two years, right? Uh, but I never really took it too seriously or never fully committed to like cast next body training. So obviously, like I said, I think it was around like October 2017. Basically got a groin injury in a club football match, top of the table clash. We won one nil, but we didn't actually go on to win the league. <laughs> And obviously when I started calisthenics at the start of January, I couldn't, like, I hadn't really properly, like, I had done, I was doing rehab and rehabilitation with um, my physio, right? And so obviously since, like, the process started towards, like, December and then leading up to January, obviously before that, I couldn't really properly, like, strength train for, like, a good several weeks, right? So obviously when I got back into, like, my own proper strength training routine when starting calisthenics, obviously it was like, my body was like, whoa. Right, obviously it wasn't used to it before and obviously because I had done some strength training in the past, obviously I knew how to like do basic movements if that makes sense. Uh, so obviously as a result, my progress was slightly faster, obviously with the previous background with weightlifting and also the fact that you know some of it was simply muscle memory right just wanted to mention that one firstly because obviously it is at the start of the video and even though it is at the start of the video some people have clearly in the comment section not actually watched the video itself to actually just jump to conclusions of the video itself when they haven't actually watched the video so just want to mention that because you should never assume now the second truth regarding my transformation is obviously the after photos, the main after photos were pretty much taken in like perfect conditions, right? Obviously if you've seen the after photos, you know, I was in very good lighting, my room had really freaking damn good lighting, right? Obviously I was flexing, right, in the after photos, probably flexing as hard as I could to the point where I almost blew my brains out. Obviously I had a filter on it, so basically I made my body stand out more uh, relative to the background, so obviously like I look like more defined, I guess you could say. And obviously it was, you know, taken straight after a workout, so obviously I had like that post-workout pump, so basically I looked, you know, bigger, more defined, more muscular, compared to what I actually look like in day-to-day -day conditions when I'm not actually, you know, working out, if that makes sense. And in funny story, you know, when I was actually editing the video itself, that's when I realized, like, if I only just showed the before photo and the after photo in, like, perfect conditions, it's gonna be very unrealistic, right? It's gonna set very unrealistic expectations for people watching the video, which wasn't really gonna be fair for you. So that's why I also, in the video, you'll notice that, as well as the main after photos, I do also show after photos where the conditions are pretty much the same as the before photos, right? They're taken in the exact same spot as the before photo. They're taken, I'm pretty sure both of them were taken first thing in the morning. And some of the after photos, again, there was no filter to make me look better. It was, again, first thing, hadn't worked out so didn't have any muscle pumps so those actually looked more realistic to establish those realistic expectations again i want to you know make that clear because again some people have watched the video but obviously not watched until the end to the point where obviously they've made assumptions in the comment section so just a good recommendation and suggestion for those types of people you know it's like just watch the full video first before you jump to conclusions, my friend. And on the other hand, for those who did watch the full video, right, hopefully now you understand that obviously like the main after photos, right, are obviously in like prime, like I literally primed my environment to, you know, make myself look as good as humanly possible, right? So obviously if you look at that 
and you look at like the other after photos I shared, which were more realistic, I guess you could say. Now you can actually like establish realistic expectations for yourself to create the transformation you want rather than like looking at my after photos in perfect conditions and be like, why aren't I walking around like that? Right? Because to be completely honest, obviously I wasn't actually walking around all day like that myself. Now the third and final truth I'm going to share right within my transformation is that my body fat percentage long term was not actually sustainable right like i said in those after photos i was freaking lean i was absolutely ripped and you know to be honest this was not actually intentional whatsoever i realized that obviously with body weight training i realized that you know, obviously fat mass has no direct carryover to strength performance so i knew that oh if i would lose just you know some excess fat i knew that body weight exercise was going to be easier so obviously that was the case obviously it did help me you know progress on to more advanced body weight progressions because I was somewhat lighter relative to my muscle mass. And obviously as a result, I just ended up, you know, after five months of progress, I just looked absolutely lean. Like I said, it's like, I, I it looks like I almost have like a freaking eight pack going on. It was actually pretty, it was pretty cool, but pretty strange. Obviously cool to the sense of like how lean and ripped I was, but also it's literally like, I remember just like pinching my belly and literally there was, there was barely anything there. Right, there was barely like an ounce of fat on me. But obviously later on, I realized that the reality is, is that obviously being super, super lean is not sustainable in the long run, right? Obviously when you're at a very, very low body fat percentage, lower than like what's actually like necessary, obviously like your body's gonna be very catabolic. Um, it's gonna be much more catabolic than it is anabolic, right? So your body is gonna break down much easier than its ability to actually rebuild, right? So obviously I found that like trying to sustain that level of leanness long term, I found it way, way harder to actually build strength and muscle trying to sustain that level of leanness uh, over time. And so obviously that's why I then did some research myself to realize, okay, what body fat percentage is healthy? And that's why I found usually it's like 10 to 15% body fat typically is, you know, the most healthiest for most men. Cause it's like, obviously, you know, you're gonna be strong, you're gonna be fit, you're gonna be muscular, you're gonna be healthy. Yeah, you're not gonna be like super damn ripped, but here's the thing. You're gonna actually not just look good, but you're gonna feel good and feel strong long-term to actually sustain that you know, for a longer period of time. And not to mention as well, again, because, you know, if you're at a sustainable level of leanness, then of course it is much easier to build strength and muscle because again, it's easier to repair and recover from workouts and not, you know, just be so broken down with like the muscle breakdown that typically, you know, happens at a faster rate when you've literally got like barely any body fat on you, right? Remember, just because you look good doesn't mean you necessarily feel good, right? I've learned this the hard way myself uh, from experience, both on like one end of, you know, gaining a load of weight and then also on the other end of getting like freaking like ripped, right? Because I mean, yeah, I think, you know, sometimes for some people it can be worthwhile doing, you know, if you want to get super damn lean for like the beach, right? Or a photo shoot or that, obviously, yeah, it's like, it's gonna be worth it like doing that in the short term, you know, it's probably something I would probably do myself again, right? When the time actually, you know, demands me to do it. But, you know, for the most part, for, you know, the other like 95% of my life, obviously I'd rather stick to something that I can enjoy and sustain to long-term. Hence why, you know, right now I do not have any plans getting that lean because there's no real reason to. So with that said, for you, if you can, you know, stay relatively lean all year round while building lean muscle, getting stronger, uh, feeling healthy and actually just feeling your best self like all year round, then honestly like you're winning mate, right? This is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, it's not just about like how fast you can get to a certain extreme goal or not. It's just about making consistent progress over time in the long run, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, with that said as well, obviously, like as you can tell in the comment section of the transformation video, everyone asked me of like, you know, what does my home programs look like? How did I do it? And so obviously, like I do have uh, free at home programs that you can check out in the link description below. I've got a beginner one that I, you know, mainly followed myself, that sort of structure and also an intermediate one, which um, I've made more recently. So again, there'll be links in the description below so you can create your own body transformation at home. So I said, if you have enjoyed this video, you like my content, you enjoyed watching every single minute and every single second of this video, then make sure to give this video a cheeky thumbs up. Comment down below what I would love to know is what videos do you want to see in the near future? Now, there's a caveat to it, right? Obviously right now, I am recovering from Golfer's Elbow. Um, it feels good right now. 
but I do have to give it extended recovery time just to be sure, right? There's no point in me making workouts and that for you if it just means that my recovery just goes down and down and down, so I'm set back longer and longer and longer. So basically, any videos that don't actually require me to use my elbows right now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this with a friend or friends you believe would benefit from these truths and gains. So yeah, again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.